Hi, this is Sir Jericho, and this video is an introductory lesson to sequences. Okay, let's talk about diagonals of convex polygons. Magsimula tayo sa triangle. Triangle. Yan ang pinakamagandang triangle na pwede. So, isa natin yan, triangle. Um, quadrilateral. Uh, Pag-usap din, diagonals, no? Diagonals. Particularly, the number. Number of number of diagonals. So, triangle, quadrilateral, sunod, five-sided polygon, it's a pentagon. Seven na lang muna. Now, let's count the diagonals. Kapag three-sided polygon, walang diagonal to. Again, diagonals are line segments connecting two non-consecutive vertices. So, hindi ka makakagawa ng diagonal dyan. So, walang diagonal ang triangle. Let's have polygon. Ah, sorry. Quadrilateral. Pag quadrilateral naman, meron tayong 1 and 2. So, dalawa. Kapag pentagon or five-sided polygon, convex, 5. Kapag 6, so let's... Nine? May nalimutan mo tayo? Wala na. Nine. So, nine. For seven. There are fourteen. So, zero, two, five, nine, fourteen. Okay. So, kaya natin ginawa to. Kasi we're going to decode. Ano yung pattern ng number ng diagonals. Paano kunyari, ano na, 10-sided polygon? Ilan yung diagonals ng 10-sided polygon? You can pause the video, solve nyo muna, try nyo i-solve. Okay. So, goal natin, makaproduce tayo ng formula para malaman natin yung number ng diagonals. So, para magawa yun, go to table. Dito yung number ng diagonals. Let's call this Y for the number of diagonals. Ha? Tapos, X dito yung sequence nung this sequence. Mamaya pala pag-usapan natin yung sequence. Pero de-designate natin si 1 for 1 for uh, triangle, 2 for quadrilateral, and so on. So kapag triangle, we have 2. Kapag 2, we have... Ah, sorry pala. Kapag pala triangle, walang diagonal. Kapag Two, we have 2. Ano tong 3 na to? So, lagi number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, pag 3 ay 5. Pag 4 ay 9. Kapag 5 ay 14. And so on. So, pwedeng 6, 7. Ang goal natin, makakakuha ng formula for 10. Actually, Walang isang approach lang para makuha yung formula ng mga gantong pattern. Kung kita nyo kagad 0, 2, 9, 14, mukhang hindi naman to pinaplasan lang ng kung anong number or kaya minumultiply lang. So, there must be a specific formula para ma-generate natin or para makuha natin yung number ng diagonals. So, walang specific technique para makuha yung ganito. Madaming proseso at yung pagkuha nun sa isa sa ibang video na lang. But for now, we're going to use Microsoft Excel just to know ano yung formula na pwede natin gamitin. So, let's start with X. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then, we're going to put Y here. Ano yung una? 0, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ah, 2, 5, sorry. 2, 5, 9, and then 14. Gawin natin, we're going to create a scatter plot. Scatter plot. Mm -hmm. So, increasing. Kita nyo? Increasing. Kukunin natin yung uh, line na mag-fit dyan sa mga points na yan. So, we'll go to our chart element, trend line function. 
So, mukhang hindi siya linear, no? Hindi siya linear. So, doon tayo sa more trend line options. Going to do polynomial. Mm -hmm. Of order 2. Kasi alam ko na na quadratic yung lalabas dito. So, display equation on chart. And display our value. Sige, papalawanan ko na konti yung our value na yan. So, kung nakikita nyo dito, ito yung equation natin. It's y equals 0.5x squared plus 0.5x minus 1. Yung r squared equals 1, in statistics, we call that coefficient of determination. Kung 1 yan, ibig sabihin, meron kang perfect. Perfect yung pagkaka-model nung equation dun sa, sa mga points. Okay? As a rule of thumb, pag mga mataas sa 0.7, maganda na yung pag-estimate niya. So, but now, ang concern natin is y equals 0.5x squared plus 0.5x minus 1. The equation is, ay, pwede itong ma-solve algebraically ha. May way para ma-solve yun. Mag-system kayo ng tatlong equations using, magpipili kayo ng tatlong points. But that will be for other video. So, yung number ng diagonals, so let y number of diagonals. Okay. So, y is equal to, yung x naman ay, nag-search sa 1, no? Ang x natin ay, kung ang n ay number ng sides. Dami ito variable, no? n, number of sides. Yung x natin ay, ano yung x? n minus 2. n, sorry, n minus 2. Para mais, tawid lang natin. n minus 2. Sige. So, y is equal to, let's go back, it's 0 0.5. This is your formula for the number of diagonals. So, if you're going to make this as a function, so, magkakaroon tayo ng f of x equals, pwede natin pa simplify ito. Mm -hmm. Factor out natin yung 1 half. Oh, wag na lang. Okay na yan. 1 half x squared plus 1 half x minus 1. So, this is your formula for the number of diagonals. Now, bakit natin ginawa to? Since we're going to talk about sequence, yung number natin na 0, 2, 0, 2, 5, 9, 14, 5, 9, 14, and so on. We call this a sequence. Sequence of numbers. And they follow a specific formula or rule para makuha natin yung susunod na kasamahan nila. Okay? So, let's have our formal definition of what a sequence is. Sequence. By the way, I am using a book, a PDF, the, an open educational resource. So, ibig sabihin, free siya. Um, ilalagay ko na lang dito sa may kanan or sa, sa, sa baba yung link kung saan pwede nyo puntahan yung kanyang website that this is my favorite pre-calculus uh, ebook okay, a sequence is a function it's a function your grade 8 math function A, so more often than not, we're going to use A cap A uh, Actually, maliit na ito. Whose domain is the natural numbers. Recall, natural numbers. Ano yung natural numbers? Natural numbers. Okay. Mathematically, ang symbol ng natural numbers ay N. Ganyan. So, natural numbers ay numbers na nagsimula sa 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay. Natural numbers, they are all, uh, also known as counting numbers. Counting numbers. And I'll explain later bakit natural numbers yung domain. Then, we're going to use the notation A sub N more often than not para mag-denote nung N term. This is also called the general term general term, or yung formula. Dito, sa, se sa sequence natin na 0, 2, 5, 9, 14, and so on, 0 is your first term, or denoted by A sub 1. 
Obviously, yung 2, A sub 2. Pangalawang term, second term. Fifth term, ah, uh, 5 is your third term. Fourth and fifth term. And so on. Yung n term mo, this is actually the formula that we have kanina. Ito, 1 half. Pero, babaguhin natin yung ginamit na variable kasi x yung ginamit natin dito. So, we'll be using n. So, it will become 1 half n squared plus 1 half n minus 1. Again, this is the n term. And these are your terms. Okay? So, testing nga natin yung a sub 4. a sub 4 is equal to 1 half times 4 squared plus 1 half times 4 minus 1. So, 4 squared, that's 16 times 1 half. 8 plus 1 half of 4, that's 2, minus 1. That's 8 plus 2, 10 minus 1, 9. Check natin yung a sub 5, ba? Medyo duda ako kanina sa drawing natin. Eh. a sub 5, substitute natin na 1 half of 5 squared plus 1 half of 5 minus 1. Minus 1. So 5 squared, that's 25 times 1 half, 12.5. Plus 1 half of 5, that's 2.5 minus 1. So 12.5 plus 2.5, that's 15 minus 1. So 14. Tama tayo. Tanong natin kanina, how about 10-sided polygon? So, kung 10-sided polygon yon, pang ilang term yung hinahanap natin? If that's a 10-sided polygon. Ito, triangle daw. So, 3 to, triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon. Yung a sub 6 natin, that will be your a sub 6. Ano a sub 6? Octagon. a sub 7, nonagon. So, we're looking for a sub 8. That's the 10-sided polygon. Mm, baka magkamali pa ako. Ano yung 10-sided polygon? Decagon. So, A sub 10. So, bahala na kayo mag-compute. A sub 8. Sorry pala, hindi pala A sub 10. A sub 8. What is A sub 8? Comment down below kung ano yung na-compute nyo sa A sub 8. Well, anyway. So, review lang tayo. Again, these are your sequence. This is your sequence. Yung mga uh, numbers ito, 0, 2, 5, 9, 14. We call them, we call, we call them uh, terms. And then, the general rule na nag-generate ng sequence, we call that the nth term or the general term. So, for example, So, we write the first four terms of the following sequence. Oh, by the way, bakit nga pala set of natural numbers lang yung part ng domain? Kung pag-uusapan natin itong general term na to, this particular general term, this is a quadratic function. And remember, the domain of the quadratic function is the set of all real numbers, kahit ano pwede mong isubstitute dyan. Hindi yan mag-undefined. Pero bakit hindi tayo pwede mag-start sa zero? Bakit hindi pwede mag- bakit hindi pwede yung negative? Bakit pag sa sequence, kailangan mag-start siya sa natural numbers. Comment down below. Ah, hindi pala. Hindi ko na pala ma... Na... Pag-upload ko na pala ito, hindi ko na mababasa. But actually, the explanation there is ah, uh, wala kasing... Wala siyang ibig sabihin. Kaya nag-start ka sa zero, ano yung zero term? Ganun? Or negative first term? Or negative second term? Parang wala siyang meaning, no? So, in short, para magkaroon ng... Para, of course, these are sequences. Kailangan may first dyan, may second dyan, may third, may fourth, and so on. So, walang sense kung mag-start ka sa zero. Pang ilang term yon Pang zero term. So, wala. So, that's the reason why natural numbers yung ginagamit natin. So, let's go with the exercises. Let's have number one. I want you to give me the first four terms of the following sequence. A sub n equals 2n plus 2. Pause the video. Solve nyo muna. Okay, first four terms. Let's start with a sub 1. So, 1 yung n natin. Sa lahat ng n dito sa formula, papaltan mo ng 1. It's 2 times 1 plus 2. 
2 times 1, that's 2, plus 2, that's 4. A sub 2, 2 times 2, plus 2. So we'll have 4 plus 2, have 6. A sub 3 is 2 times 3, plus 2. We'll have 2 times 3, that's 6, plus 2, 8. A sub 4, remember, 4 hanggang 4 term lang yung kailangan. 2 times 4, plus 2, we have 10. So therefore, the first 4 terms of this n term, or this sequence, 4, 6, do not forget to separate the terms using a comma, 8, 10. Let's have number, let's have number 2. For number 2, Oh, ito, galing to dun sa e-book. A sub n equals 5 raised to n minus 1. Oh, yeah, medyo nag-iba ng konti, no? 3 raised to n. n is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, pag nakita kayo ng ganito, ibig sabihin lang nito, yung n mo, yung domain ng n mo, o yung mga possible lang, o yung mga gusto lang niya na kasama ng n, ay lahat lang ng n na greater than or equal to 1. Okay, let's have a sub 1. A sub 1. Yeah, medyo kumapal. Again, lahat ng n, papalta mo ng 1. So, it's 5 raised to 1 minus 1 over 3 raised to 1. So, that's 5 raised to 0 over 3 raised to 1. Ano yung 5 raised to 0? Ah, very good. That's 1 over 3. So, first term is 1 third. A sub 2. It's 5 raised to 2 minus 1 over 3 raised to 2. So, it'll become 5 raised to 1 over 3 squared. So, 5 raised to 1, that's 5 over 9. So, we have 5 over 9. A sub, A sub 3. 5 raised to 3 minus 1 over 3 raised to 3. This is 5 squared over 3 cubed. So, we'll have 25 over, what's 3 cube? 27. Okay. A sub 4. So for A sub 4, we'll get 5 raised to, and so not, 5 raised to, uh, 4. 4 minus 1 over 3 raised to 4. So we have 5 cube over 3 raised to 4. 5 cubed is 125. 3 raised to 4 is 27 times 3. 81. So for this particular sequence, the terms are 1 third, 5 over 9, 25 over 27, and 125 over 81. So let's have number 3. Number 3 is a sub n equals 1 half. Oh, kamukha ito nung kanina na generate natin. 1 half x squared plus 2x minus 1. So for this item number 3, hindi ko na siya sagutan. Um, sagutan nyo. Tapos, if you have any questions, you can comment, comment or leave a comment. You can send me a message kung gusto nyo malaman.